Father, we ask you to bless this word. Bless it with your anointing. In the name of Jesus, let us get what you want us to get out of it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Past two cents. Listen, we're going to read from the book of Ruth. And we're going to deal with two ladies, Naomi and Ruth. I'm going to read partially the first couple of verses and then the end of the book. It's only four chapters, but just for the sake of time. Now, um, it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled and there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of the wife was Naomi, and the name of her two sons were Malan and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Now I'm going to go from there. The daughters moved. The whole family moved. And they lived somewhere else for 10 years. And then her two sons died. I'm just saying it for the sake of time. Now, after her two sons died, now she's in total mourning. There is no worse, from what I hear, there's no worse mourning than when a mother loses her children. You can lose mother, father, sister, brother, even husband. But they say a mother's mourning is the worst, a mother's sorrow. Now, when she decided to go back to the land where her people were, she, they called her. They said, oh, here comes Miriam. She said, no, don't call me that. Call me Mata. Mata means bitter. She was bitter in mourning. She was bitter in, in her emptiness. She was hurting. And a lot of times when life hits us and we are hurting, we don't realize that God is setting up a plan of action. When we think things are caving in, we think things are falling apart, things are scattered. To us, it's like, how could God do this to me? What did I do wrong? And you didn't do anything wrong. God has a plan. That's what we don't get. There's a song that says, um, out of the fire, to the flames of another trial. When you think that your heart has had all it can take and nothing is there left to break. In the heat of the fire, he will pull you through. When you don't understand it, he is tried and true. No matter the problem, God has an answer for you. So when the rain falls hard, the storm winds come, you think it will never blow over. Trouble under your feet, nothing over your head. You find yourself running for cover. Oh, God has another Remember, God has another plan. That's what we forget. That's what we forget. God has another plan. So sometimes, you know how the saying goes, your attitude determines your altitude. Well, we can go through trials and we can complain and call up Susie Q. Girl, you know what happened? God must be mad at me. Blah, 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 blah. You go through life. And you, you, you're frustrated and you, you go from trial to chaos to crisis to tragedy from trial. And it's like, what the heck is going on? What did I do? Is God that angry with me? But it's not always the case. Miriam wanted to be called Mata because she was bitter. She felt like God had dealt Naomi. bitterly with her. Naomi. I mean, Naomi, I'm sorry. She felt like God had dealt bitterly with her. I did get the name mixed up when I said Mary, I, I meant Naomi. You did her. Okay. So here Naomi is in the pit of her mourning. 
And she's sending the girls away. She's trying to get her daughter-in-laws to move and go back to their people so she can go back to, her, you know, and she can go back to hers and just deal with being alone for the rest of her life. Being alone, useless, empty, whatever. And one daughter-in-law kisses her and she goes home. The other daughter-in-law, which is Ruth, chooses to stay. She begs her, please. She hangs on her. Please let me stay. Your people will be my people. Your country will be my country. Your God will be my God. If I don't live up to this, let God deal with me. And she lives up to it. And what ends up happening, now Naomi is not alone. Naomi still has family that wants to be with her. So God always has a way of putting that somebody right there in your corner when you're really going through. And that's what he did. It was like a divine assignment. They were assigned to each other, but they don't get it. Naomi is mourning her sons. Ruth is mourning her husband. They're both in mourning, but they don't get what the plan of God is. They don't get that at all, like we do. We don't see, well, what sense does this make, right? It's true. It's true. We don't really get it. But here we go. She goes from point A to point B. They go through all these little plans of actions. I'm making it real brief for the sake of time. Now, everything Naomi tells Ruth to do, she does. Am I right? Okay. All right. After she does what she's going to do, she ends up with Boaz. Hey. Boaz was her next of kin. He gave another next of kin the first chance because that's the way the lineage went. He said, no, you handle it. So he takes her in to be his wife. Now, here's the trick. We don't see it in our lives, what's lining up in front of us. God had another plan. What was God's plan? I'm going to tell you the punchline now. King David. Everybody knows who King David is. All right. Well, we had Jesse, right? Right. We had, I got to name the language. Hang on. I want you to hear this. I'm trying to do this within a 12-minute period. So we don't have to stop the flow. But when we deal with the lineage, the lineage is, let me get this right. Simon begat Boaz. Boaz begat Obed. That was, Obed was the son of Boaz and, Na and, and Ruth. What Ruth did was turn Obed over and let Naomi mother her child. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot King David. Now, who would have expected to be the grand, the great, 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 great grandmother of the king of Israel? The most famous king just about, because David was a man after God's own heart. So when you look at that and you see how life can bring you to a pinnacle point, and to you it looks like it's bringing you down into a pit, but God says, no, I've got another plan. I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing you up. I'm elevating you. I'm promoting you. So every trial in your life ends up being a stepping stone rather than something to stumble over. And that's where we have to try to be encouraged. When life throws its best at us and the devil attacks and our family goes cuckoo and everything goes bump in the night and we don't we want to pull our hair out at the root. God has another plan. And if we can live our lives and stay faithful to God, like Ruth and Naomi did, we will see our fullness of what God has planned for us in the fullness of time. 
His plan will play out. And when we look back, and they say hindsight is 2020, we'll get why we had to go through that, why we had to go through that, why we had to go through that. And it will all make sense to us at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. God bless you. I hope that's encouraging. Yeah. That's good. Thank yeah. you. Favorite Bible story. Mm -hmm. That's your favorite? Yeah.